Imagine buying an adult Cresta Gecko as a pet, and all of a sudden she pops out four surprise babies. Yeah, that's what happened to me. So today I'm going to be filling you guys in on the care for hatchling and juvenile cresties compared to adult cresties. Before I jump into it, I just want to ask that you please like and subscribe this video and let me know in the comment section what type of videos you would like to see in the future. I'd really like to know. My whole world revolves around studying these animals, researching they, their care, and providing them with the best care I possibly can. Cresta geckos definitely have a special place in my heart because they were once considered extinct. And then in 1994, they rediscovered them, but they still are being threatened with extinction. So the pop their population is dying out in the wild, and it's our fault for destroying their habitats. And so I think that it's definitely our responsibility as caretakers to make sure that we can give them the best lives possible in captivity because we are taking that away from them in the wild. So I have Cresty straight out of the... <laughs> So I have Cresties who are straight out of the egg, hatchlings, juveniles, adults, and, and obviously an adult who has laid eggs. And although all of their care is kind of the same, there are some differences. All of my Cresties are very healthy and thriving, growing at a great rate, and I would just like to care, um, share with you guys my care for them so that hopefully I can answer any questions that you may have if you're interested in buying a Cresty or you already have one, hopefully this video will help you to give them a better life. The scientific name for Cresta Gecko is Coriolifus ciliatus. So for baby Cresta Geckos, it's important to keep in mind that they do dehydrate and overheat a lot easier than adult Cresta Geckos. Cresta Geckos should be kept around room temperature. Anything above 80 degrees can be lethal for them. So you do not need a heat source. You don't need a, to put a light on them or a heat mat. Um, they're just perfectly fine at room temperature. For hatchlings, you definitely want to keep their setup small and simple and use paper towel substrate to make sure that you can tell they are pooping because if they are pooping, then you know they are eating and they are healthy. You want to miss daily. But you want to make sure you're not over misting if they are in a tub because over misting can cause respiratory infections in the babies if you do not have proper ventilation. So you want to have holes on the top of the tub and all around the tub to ensure that the crested gecko is getting proper ventilation. I've found that my hatchling crested geckos really love egg crates. It gives them a place to hide. It gives them something to climb all over. And when you spray it, it holds humidity pretty well. For all Cresta geckos, hatchlings, all the way up to adults, you want to make sure that you, you are using a dechlorinator for your water if you are using tap water because you do not want them having all that chlorine and stuff in the water. It's really bad for them. I use Riptosafe for my water. There's also a really good dechlorinator from Josh's Frogs that I will link down below. I'm going to link down all the products I use down below so that you guys can go and um, order them if you want to get them for your Cresties. Proper humidity for a Cresta Gecko is between 60 and 80%. You really definitely do not want to fall below 60%. And you really don't want to go much higher than 80% because it can cause respiratory infections with your Cresta Geckos, especially if they are in tubs. Tubs obviously hold humidity a lot better than, you know, tanks with screen lids. You can buy a hygrometer to measure the humidity levels, but you definitely don't want to get the cheap hygrometers from PetSmart. They do not work, or any pet stores, those round hygrometers, they do not work. I've tested it. Just don't. Don't waste your money. It's a complete waste. I will link down below a digital hygrometer that I use that is great and on point. So you want to be sure that you are misting at night. I found that my babies that I keep in tubs, I only have to mist once at night. And the reason for this is because they are awake at night. That's when they are going to be drinking their water and eating and being more active. So you want to make sure you mist at night. Also, I will link down below. Um, I, I use a fine mister 
from Josh's frogs from my hatchlings who are kept in tubs because you really don't want it wet. You want it misted so that they can drink the droplets, but you don't want it wet. And so for my bigger ones, my bigger adult crested geckos, I do use um, a sprayer because their vivariums are really big and they're bioactive and there's plants in there and stuff. So I use a bigger mister for that, obviously, but for the babies who are kept in tubs, I do use a fine mister, not the big mister because you do not want it soaking wet in there. Like I said, it can cause respiratory infection. For all geckos, you want to include a lot of foliage because they do not like empty space. They like to have things to hide underneath. They like to, it makes them feel more secure. So it's very important to make sure you have lots of plants, whether it's fake plants or real plants. Make sure that the real plants are, you know, specific uh, and safe for crested geckos. A good place to buy plants for crested geckos is um, Josh's Frogs or the Bio Dude, which is the two places that I go to for all my plants. You don't want to just buy plants from uh, Lowe's or Walmart because they do include uh, fertilizers that can be very harmful to the crested geckos. If you don't want to keep your crested gecko baby in a tub and you want something more visually appealing, there are these little critter cages that I recommend. I will also link those down below. They are just little glass critter cages with a screen top. Those you, if you're going to be using paper towel substrate for those, I do recommend misting twice a day because there's a lot of ventilation in them and they do seem to dry out, um, dry out a lot more quickly than the tubs. You want to make sure that you start your hatchlings out um, with Pangea diet or Rapashi diet. I recommend using Pangea for breeding and growth because it, in, it includes the right amount of calcium, insects, and all that that they need to grow properly. After your hatchling is about a month old, you can introduce insects. Make sure that you are giving them very small crickets. Um, you don't want to get a cricket, give them a cricket that's bigger than the space between their eyes. They could choke on it. And I only recommend giving them this if they have are established on the Pangea. You know they're eating the Pangea. They're pooping and all of that good stuff so oh yeah and uh dust the insects with rapashi calcium plus or a calcium with vitamin d3 um you can offer this to them once a week um or twice a week uh you don't want to add extra calcium to the pangea the pangea is already mixed to perfection like really that's th some great stuff you don't need to add anything extra to it if you do add calcium to the Pangea, you could end up harming the geckos more than helping them. And I have heard of people, there is some talk online about adding calcium to the Pangea in their food, which I definitely do not recommend. You could definitely hurt your geckos more than help them. Oh yeah, and you only want to offer like one cricket at a time at first because um, you don't know if the gecko is going to eat it right away. and if he doesn't end up eating them, they could actually bite the gecko or, you know, cause him stress. So only one at a time to begin with. If he's eating the crickets, you can uh, offer two. You really don't want to offer any more than two very small crickets at a time when they are first getting started um, eating insects. For my adult crested geckos, I do feed every three days for my babies. I offer them Pangea every other day just to make sure that they are eating and getting the nutrients they need. For hatchling and juvenile babies, you really want to go with the Pangea that includes insects. The breeding and growth Pangea is really good and they also have a couple of flavors that have insects in the Pangea. Hatchling and juvenile Cresties who are not giving in given insects it kind of stunts their growth. They don't get as big as they should. Um, insects, you know, out in the wild, that's that's their diet. They eat insects. So it's very important to give them Pangea with insects and offer them insects once or twice a week. So for hatchling and juvenile crusties, you really don't want to handle them, especially hatchlings. You don't want to handle them at first. 
you want to make sure they get a little bit of weight on them, about 10 grams, because not only can they overheat from handling your body temperature, we're at, you know, 98.5, but it can also cause them a lot of stress, and babies are very, very, very fast, and they can get away from you very easily, and once you lose that baby, you're probably not going to find them, so just only handle if you are moving them into a new enclosure the enclosures i put my hatchlings in i just leave them there i don't switch out their enclosures until they get about 10 grams because i really don't agree with handling hatchlings at all or juveniles until they are at least 10 grams something else i forgot to mention about their diets is uh, Cresta geckos do not eat a lot so you don't for especially for hatchlings you don't want to give them a big deli cup full of rapashi or pangea because they're not gonna eat it all um, they're gonna lick it a couple times you won't even be able to tell that they've touched it so I get these little um, paper cups the smaller ones to give to my hatchlings and I literally just put just a, a couple little uh, drops of, I don't know if that's the proper term, drops, but uh, I'll show you guys. This is literally all I give my hatchling crusties, and I still can't tell that they're even touching it. Um, you're not going to be able to tell the hatchling is eating from how much they consume out of their bowl. The only way you're going to know that they're eating is if you see poop. And if you see poop, they're definitely eating, so don't be alarmed if you can't tell they're eating the Pangea. Also, for my hatchlings, I recommend watering down their food just a little bit more just to make sure that it's easier to digest and they're getting hydration. If you are concerned that your gecko hatchling or juvenile or even adults, if you're concerned that they may be dehydrated, you can actually add Pedialyte to their Pangea just to make sure that they're getting those extra electrolytes and getting hydration because that's very important with geckos. You do not want them to dehydrate. So the number one thing I love most about Crested Geckos is they're really a low maintenance pet. Of course, you have to feed them every other day or every three days if they're adults and give them crickets once or twice a week. But, you know, they don't eat much, so their poops are very, very small. Hatch hatchlings, it's literally like the tiniest poop I've ever seen in my life. But, like I was saying, the maintenance is very, very low on these animals. Of course, if you see a lot of poop, you want to clean up their poop. But other than that, that's about it. Um, especially if they get bigger and, you know, you want to put them in a bioactive vivarium, which is what I have my adult female in. Um, she thrives in there and literally never have to clean up anything. My springtails and my isopods do all that work for me. If I do see a, a large poop, I'll pick it up, obviously. And um, I like to wipe the glass down with vinegar. You don't want to use like a Windex or bleach or anything like that for their vivariums um, because it can... It can definitely be toxic to them. It is toxic to them. But yeah, so whenever I have a bioactive vivarium, I just like to wipe down the glass with um, vinegar. You can even dilute it if you don't like the smell. If you decide that you do not want to keep your gecko in a bioactive vivarium, that is perfectly fine. But you may want to remove the gecko and clean everything out with something a little bit stronger than vinegar. I recommend diluted bleach or there are some... Um, enclosure reptile safe enclosure cleaners out there but whatever it is please make sure that everything has been completely rinsed off and dry before replacing your gecko back into the vivarium so i think i've pretty much covered everything about crested gecko care i do recommend going and watching a lot of videos don't just depend on one video for crested gecko care or any um, animal care for that matter. Uh, do your research and watch as many videos as you can. Um, it's really important that we give these li these animals the lives that they deserve. Um, also, if, I, if you notice I missed anything, please comment down below 
and let us all know so that we can just make sure that we do the best we can for these animals. Um, I'm sure I probably missed something. So comment down below if you can think of anything else you want to add to this video. We can kind of make a community out of this. Also, if you would like to see more of my animals, be sure to follow me on Instagram. My handle is at LilyExotic. I post on there every day about all of my animals and it's just a lot of fun. I like to connect with people and talk to people who are also interested in reptiles and exotic animals. Again, please like and subscribe and comment down below if you want to see more videos like these or give me some ideas of what kind of videos I should post in the future. I'd really like to know. And if you add me on Instagram, feel free to send me pictures of your crusties. I'd love to see them.